Hi everyone and welcome. This is our final installment of how to make a head from component parts created in Aspire. A little fun for Halloween 2021. So as we look at the head that we attempted to make, we've made the mouth and the nose and the eyes and the ears. Let's move forward and see if we can put it all together. This was the original head that we started with. We made the eyes based upon an arc, a two reel sweep for the side of the face. That arc was just a suggestion or an attempt to think of how thick the head might have been. The approach was to take that arc and mirror it across the center line and join them together to create a full arc. That's going to be one of the shapes for our two rail sweep to create our base head. We have a smaller one for the top of the head, our one that we used for the eye, and one for the mouth. I drew a vector around the shape of the head, cut it in half, obviously, for our two-rail sweep. And one of the key parts that I've talked about on a regular basis is to make sure you use the least amount of nodes possible. It will definitely affect how your two-rail sweep comes out. I place my first shape after selecting my two rails, my second shape, about where the eyes are, and my third shape for the mouth. And that's about the base shape of the head that I'm looking for. To this, we're going to add our component parts of the face that we've made earlier. Remember to keep the nodes simple and easy. Taking that base shape, I do a little sculpting just to smooth out some of the rough edges. I'm not happy with how just the lips are because the face and around the mouth have many more muscles that need to be defined. So as usual, drawing the vectors and creating component shapes. If you do take up the challenge to create a face, it may be worthwhile to grab a few books or do some studying on facial muscles. They would be the components that need to be made, and each face is slightly different. I'm going to use a two rail sweep for those little ridges underneath the nose, between the nose and the mouth. Once 
Once I'm happy with this collection of components, I create a component from the visible models and I take it into the sculpting tool. As in previous videos, the sculpting tool plays a major part in the end results. This is where your decision on how the face should look becomes important. I'm going to smooth a little bit and smudge a little bit. We have the basic components down and in their location, but now it needs a lot of special work. I'm just going to be dealing with my copy. I still have my original components in case I ever wanted to go back and change something. But I think I can work with this collection right here. Doesn't look much like the mouth we expected, does it? But let's add a few more items. Our original lips. Again, take, take both of those into our sculpting tool and smooth them out. Can you see the mouth starting to develop? At this point, what I'd like to do is now see how the other component parts interact with each other. They're all going to be set appropriately, but I want to delete the area underneath the nose and the mouth. So I draw a boundary vector around the nose, select that vector and select the component of the mouth and delete what's inside. So the mouth is separate from the nose. I'd like to make some more adjustments to around the mouth because it doesn't fit exactly what I think it should. I'm going to create another component for underneath our mouth. It's a simple two rail sweep, a left and right vector, and a shape. It sort of undulates, making sure the tip right below the nose is a little higher than the rest of the face. Create my component. take that into the sculpting tool and smooth out some of the sharp edges. And this is going to add just that extra little bit of lift for the lips. Select that component and the boundary vector I created for around our original mouth. And keep everything inside. So let's see how it all fits together. Let's add the mouth to this new shape. And after a few hours of work, let's compare. 
Here's our base shape that we've just created. And this was our original mouth with the muscles. More sculpting, more smoothing, more smudging, and the mouth starts to take some shape. I'm constantly referring back to the original picture to make sure I get as close as possible. There's our final mouth. I think I'm okay with it. Let's see how the rest of the parts fit now. There's our eyes that we've made in a previous video. The nose. You could see since we made our nose rather thin or flat in the Z, we need to adjust the base height to bring it to match the eye level and the mouth. Relying on the 3D view helps tremendously, as we'll know the end result based upon that view. There's the base shape of the head that we created. And since the geometry was copied from one to another, the eyes match up pretty good with the shape of the head, the mouth lays on top as well as the nose. And of course, we add the ears. I think the face is coming out pretty good. Let's compare it to the picture. So now for the big finish. Let's review. We have our original picture. We have our component parts that we just created and from previous videos. The base shape of the head. The lips, the original ones. And then our modified lip mouth area. We have our nose, and our eyes. And of course, the ears. It just takes a little bit of thinking through each part trying to maintain a certain height in the Z. And constantly referring to the picture that we've chosen and make a copy of this visible model. And bring that into the sculpting tools and start smoothing or smudging or whatever's necessary. Just remember to take your time the computer needs to regenerate the pixels based upon the tools that you've used. When we're smoothing, we have the option of a different mode for how the software will approach adjusting the pixels. Normal will average out the high and low points under the cursor, dragging them up or down as appropriate. You have the option to choose raise, and that will maintain the highest points under the cursor when smoothing something out. And a third option of lower, which will maintain the lowest points under the cursor. Most people will just use the normal smoothing option. I like to try different effects, the raise and lower, to see if I can achieve something a little bit easier or more appropriate. I want to see if I can smooth that line out between the bottom of the eye component and the head and, and the mouth muscle.
and I get it as close as I want and then use the smudge tool to simply drag that part of the face down. This process could take several hours, but in the end, I think it's worth it. And if we hit OK and save that, we get now to look at comparison. There's our picture, and here's my end result. We did actually cut it out of a piece of wood to see the end results and I think it came out okay. So there we are. We're at the end. I hope you've enjoyed this little series of body parts. The head. Couple components. Quite a bit of smoothing and smudging. But that's okay. It's part of the process. I hope you get to attempt a face and see how it works out. Don't be discouraged. It just takes a bit of practice. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell to be notified of our next video. Any questions? Send me an email. I'll try to help out. mm at mazalik.com. And I'd like to thank everyone for supporting me in this effort. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, there's a link in the description below. See you next time. Enjoy.